Hello, welcome back. I am going to install OpenSea's Pi for my very first time, and I thought I would uh, take you along for the ride with me. So, what do we do first? Well, first we go and look up Michael Scott's videos. Oh, well, there's Michael Scott. Click on that. And this is his YouTube channel, which is nicely set up here. And I am going to go to the very first video he's got, which is install Anaconda and run Jupyter Notebooks locally. Okay, so in this video, I'd like to go over how to install Jupyter Notebooks locally so you can run your notebooks without having to go through DesignSafe, the Jupyter Hub on DesignSafe, uh, which sometimes has some technical issues. Okay, so locally is uh, faster, but of course you have to download and uh, use up local space. And, uh, there's always pros and cons, right? But this gives you uh, another option. Okay. So if you go to this website here, uh, Anaconda Distribution, which I'll uh, post on Canvas, all right, uh, just click Download right here, okay, and then you see a Python 3 version and a Python 2 version. We want Python 3, all right, so click Download over here, okay, and you'll see down here in the lower left, it's 462 megabytes. That's going to take a while. while. All right, right, so I'm just going to cancel it. it. I've already, already downloaded, downloaded it. it. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, uh, so, so then once, once that's installed, or you'll, you'll it'll, it'll download, download a uh, self-installer, self and then you run, run the auto installer. installer. It'll, it'll install all the packages, et cetera, et cetera. You know, once that's done, it takes a few minutes. All right. But you go to your start menu and type Anaconda. here. And I'm going to go there. So I'm going to go to the Anaconda distribution. Got to find my, uh, oh, I just got to exit there. So I'm going to Google Anaconda distribution. And here we go here. And I wouldn't be surprised if things are different from when it was recorded. So I'm going to just kind of scroll down to see what my options are. Well, I think I'm just going to go with the download button. So I go to download, brings me down here. I have a 64-bit Windows machine, so that's what I'm going to choose. And it's downloading. So you can see you can kind of keep track here. And as Michael said, it's a self-installing system, which is always a good thing. Click it. And that's saying welcome. Don't have many options. Here's my license agreement. You have to scroll all the way to the bottom of it to read it. I agree with that. Just me. Oh, I think I'm just going to do it here for all users on this computer, even though I'm the only one. I do have administrative privileges, I believe. See program date on Anaconda 3. That looks good. Problem is, I don't have enough space on my computer. So I'm going to pause the recording, make some room on my computer, and come back. Okay, I should be okay right now, but let me just make sure. I browse, I click OK, and now it's fine. Now I've got 13 gigabytes. Amazing what the throwing off stuff away can do for you. Okay, the directory is not empty. What if I put in there? Did I already start a? Uh, I'm gonna go into my program files. C program files. C program files. And what else was it? Wasn't it Anaconda? Maybe it's the other program files then. C program data, Anaconda. Well, hey, that means I may have already installed it on this computer. Oh yeah, way back when. Oh well, there it goes. Oh, this is like the worst thing that I could do in my whole life. Oh well, that's gonna make a lot of room. Okay, I'm gonna 
pause the recording until that's done because this may be a little bit of time. What I realized I should do is I should go and uninstall. So programs, apps and features. I'm going to go to anywhere, apps and features. Come, I don't see any. Oh, there it is. Anaconda, Python. I'm going to click this. I don't know why this is like super tiny. And I'm going to uninstall it. Sure, why not? You don't want to just delete files like I had done. Or like I was going to do. Uninstall. Okay, it's uninstalling. I'm going to pause this and uh, catch up again when it's done. Okay, looks like it's done, completed. Next, completing Anaconda uninstall has been installed. Click to close. Yay! So now I can go back to my installation of Anaconda and go, hey, it's not empty anymore. Okay, so I want to register it as a system Python. Yes. Add Anaconda 3 to a system path environment variable. Sounds, oh. Says not recommended. Instead, open Anaconda 3 with the Windows Start menu. Select Anaconda 64 bit. Add to path option makes Anaconda get found before previously installed software, but may cause problems requiring you. Oh, if I do this one, it will make it appear before the others, but it may cause problems requiring you to uninstall and reinstall Anaconda. So let's not do that. I'm registering it as my Python, though. See, it's not as easy as uh, Michael made it sound, mainly because I forget that I've installed things. I'm going to pause and catch up again. Okay, that felt like it took forever, but it wasn't quite that long. But all right, I'm going to click next. And Anaconda, JetBrains. Oh, I think I installed some sort of JetBrains, but it was like PyCharm. On my other computer. Working with Python and Jupyter Notebooks is a breeze with PyCharm Professional. Oh, now you tell me. Code completion. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Notebook debugger, VCS support. If I knew what VCS is, I guess that's where they support you. SSH, Docker, I don't know, databases, and more. Oh my gosh, it totally makes you want to go in and click PyCharm. But I'm going to go next for now and only follow the directions that I've been given. Completing Anaconda. Anaconda Individual Edition Tutorial. Learn more about Anaconda. I don't need that right now. Oh, let's put that in. Let's leave it. Okay. Welcome to Anaconda. Create an account. Individual. And Well, I'm hoping that uh, Michael's going to walk me through and tell me what to do at this point. Okay. There's a tutorial. This is a getting started. And let's go back to the video. This was never an option for me. That's weird. Well, let's see what he says. I'm going to back up a little bit and uh, take it from there. Your start menu and type Anaconda, and you'll see this Anaconda prompt uh, come up. All right. Let's make sure that I can do that at least. Anaconda, there it is. Ooh. Lots of options here, way too many. Oh, I've got a Jupyter Notebook. Spider, oh, okay, this is good. So let's keep seeing what he says here. And a prompt uh, come up. All right, just click on that, and you'll see what it looks like a DOS window. All right, but here, just type Jupyter Notebook. Okay. And that'll open a new tab in your web browser, and you'll see here, your local file structure. Okay, so here's, you know, like desktop. Right, and I think, I don't think I have to do that. I think I can just go to my little pull down menu, click on Jupyter Notebook, and look at that. It did it all for me. Excellent. Oh, look at that. It's got all my files. 
All right, let's go back to the video. That's a good place to be. Documents, downloads, favorites, links, all that stuff. Okay, uh, so you can download your notebook assignments from Canvas and then you know bring them up here locally. Okay, so downloads. I have you know some stuff here. All right, but there's uh, this assignment five file. Just open it up. Click on it. Right and we can run everything locally okay so i can just do cell run all hold of these it gets down to the bottom there's no errors or anything so the anaconda distribution that you downloaded and installed you know it has numpy it has uh, scipy it has a lot of other standard packages already included all right so it you should be able to import all of those locally uh, when we get to open seas uh, I'll show you how to uh, install OpenSeas and then uh, use that uh, as well, okay, locally. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, once you're done, you know, you can save, save the file, right, and then go back to your directory. You know, like, this is still in the downloads directory, but, you know, upload to Canvas from the downloads directory or wherever you have the notebook. Uh, upload it into uh, Canvas. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching. Oh, look at this. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my notebook, and I'm going to go to, I guess I should make a folder. How do I make a new folder? New folder. And maybe that's the one. Ugh, this is so kludgy. It drives me nuts. Okay. So I go here. What you have to do is you right click on it and then you can rename it. And I'm going to say my Jupyter Notebooks. Okay. There it is. Now I'm here. Now I'm going to do a new Python 3. And it sets up. It's nice because you know, this is your working folder, but then you also always just see where you're at and if it's open. Oh, I'm used to doing this in Design Safe. So I can say A equal three. Load. I don't even know. I'd have to look up things. So the way you run this is you press Shift Enter and I can say Print A. Shift Enter. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. There it is. A. Z equals hello world. Shift enter. And I can say print Z. Shift enter. There's my hello world. Excellent. I've made it. Thank you, Michael. All right. I think that's it. And now I can move on to the next video. But I'm going to stop it right now. Thanks. Bye.